good morning all my name is dr kinnari wala i am associate professor in uh, department of nephrology division of pediatric nephrology today we are going to discuss a uh, trend in india about pediatric kidney transplantation so we will start with a case a uh, simple case so there was a 4 year old child who was diagnosed as posterior urethral valve and uh, as per the guideline he underwent a valve fulguration at 1 and 1/2 year of age followed by revision cystoscopy at 1 and 1/2 year of age in past child had multiple episodes of recurrent urinary tract infection which led him to uh, end stage kidney disease at a very young age that was only at 4 years of age so child admitted to our hospital uh, uh, with urosepsis in september 2017 that time child had severe stunting severe wasting his weight was only 6.8 kg which is way below his minus 2 standard deviation height was only 82 cm after primary treatment as we all know that after treatment of infection still uh, his creatinine has not decreased to uh, less than 5 so family was advised uh, to uh, undergo renal replacement therapy or a kidney replacement therapy but however uh, because of the various family issues it was not possible to do live related uh, kidney transplantation so child was initiated on uh, continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis in september 2017 in the same uh, admission which continued till august 2018 However, it was very unfortunate that we had to remove CAPD catheter uh, after first episode of uh, peritonitis, which was refractory peritonitis. So CAPD catheter was out within a year, and child was shifted to maintenance hemodialysis. <coughs> Sorry, via right internal jugular vein, uh, using a temporary dual lumen uh, HD catheter from August 2018 to April 2019. So it was a very long time we could salvage his uh, uh, temporary uh, catheter HD catheter, but. it is not the uh, the right option so child was uh, uh, advised to get av fistula done despite very high failure rate that is around 70 percentage of failure rate also child was very small he was hardly 8 kg uh, at the time of uh, when we advised him for fistula and he had very poor uh, vessel caliber av fistula was performed by uh, our uh, surgeons in the institute and in trim we continued dialysis through uh, temporary hd catheter and finally after 8 weeks of maturation uh, av fistula was cannulated through which child had uh, undergone dialysis for almost 6 months and uh, the, during all this time child was also enrolled in the uh, cadaver uh, state organ tissue transplantation program and uh, very luckily on 28 december 2019 child underwent uh, Uh, child got a cadaver call and he underwent uh, uh, laparoscopic right uh, nephrorectectomy followed by right iliac fossa open cadaver renal transplant uh, the donor was 15 years of age and uh, cause of death was road traffic accident and his creatinine was 0.6 at the time of uh, donation so we look at the last follow up that was uh, when child had one year three month post transplant he has gained weight that is now 20 kg which is 13 kg gain from the uh, presentation height is 109 cm which is almost 20 cm gain from the presentation and his creatinine is 0.39 so as you can see a transplantation specifically pediatric kidney transplantation is not a one man show it is a multidisciplinary care and where starting from neonatologist to the transplant surgeon we need uh, everyone's help so it is a multidisciplinary care and despite so much of uh, facilities and the science has reached to the level where we can do transplant in a 10 kg old boy despite that still today also prevention is the only option for chronic kidney disease so we need to uh, prevent development of uh, chronic kidney disease and we need to uh, retard the progression of chronic kidney disease that is the only modality and that is the best modality available so how we can prevent uh, uh, ckd so whenever we come across uh, aki we need to treat that aki timely specifically those who are in hypovolemic states they are very uh, uh, good cases that we where we can prevent aki severe aki and then ultimately ckd timely management of the infections which can cause uh, kidney injury like malaria dengue septicemia severe septic shock prevention of hypoxic damage in newborns can also uh, uh, prevent long term uh, poor kidney outcome our belt our gujarat rajasthan is a belt called as a stone belt and if we prevent the uh, Uh, renal stone formation or the recurrent re renal stone formation after <coughs> thorough evaluation and timely treatment then there also we can prevent uh, development of ckd all the rprf that is a rapidly progressing renal fair ca failure cases should be referred timely and we need to use drugs like amikacin ibuprofen very judiciously uh, to prevent nephrotoxicity 
So, what is Organ Transplantation Act? In India, since uh, 1994, uh, uh, there is a Human Organ Transplantation Act, which is uh, mainly to prevent uh, organ trafficking and to uh, regularize the uh, disease donor uh, transplantation program. So, if we talk about the transplantation, kidney organ transplantation, who can donate? There are two kind of uh, transplantation uh, or a donor can be there. One is a life and another is disease donor. So, life uh, as per the uh, act, only uh, near relatives that is mother, father, uh, grandparents, brother or sister who are more than 18 years of age can donate. Also, there are not related like wife or a swap transplant, there a live donor can donate the organ. However, donor should be more than 18 years of age, less than 18 years are not permitted even with the uh, guardian's consent. They should be psychologically sound, there has to be a psychological uh, psychologist certificate before we uh, opt for the organ, they opt for the organ donation and clearance from the various other specialties uh, like urology, anesthesiology if a female gynecology all this specialty clearance has to be taken uh, those the other option is disease donor transplant where uh, the do organ donation has been done after brain death so they are still heart is still beating but brain is not working where we can uh, utilize their organs for the uh, those who are in the end stage for children when we explain them kidney renal uh, kidney trans kidney replacement therapy uh, when their GFR drops to less than 15, that is a eGFR, that is we calculate by modified Swartz uh, formula. If that drops to less than 15, then we advise them to go for uh, kidney replacement therapy. <coughs> In very few cases when even if GFR is more than 15 but there are other causes like severe uh, hyperkalemia which is uncontrolled with medication or child is edema, edematous after uh, nephrotic syndrome there also we can advise them early kid kidney renal replacement therapy. And we do start their uh, preparation about counseling, about fistula formation and uh, donor preparation all these things we start when the GFR is. 30. So, between 30 to 15, we prepare them for the donation and after 15, we start them for kidney replacement therapy. However, there are few absolute indications when you have uncontrolled malignancy where they don't uh, advise the uh, kidney transplantation. If child has other irreversible organ damage, then that has to be uh, addressed first. HIV is still a relative contraindication, it is not an absolute contraindication. But and another thing is if child has severe intellectual disability, then those cases we need to uh, take a pause, think about the uh, tra uh, kidney transplant option and then move forward. There are other relative indications also like active infection, we need to treat that infection first and then go for the transplantation. And in the cases where the bladder is very bad like uh, PUR, like VUR, <coughs> like other bladder disorders, bladder extrophy and all or ARM cases, they need a proper bladder before the transplantation. So, what size we can do transplant at the earliest? So, generally in our institute we have done the smallest is 10 kg. Yes, in the western world they have done even smaller kids, 6 months of age kid also they have done transplant. Still in India people are more comfortable if the uh, 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 weight of the child is more than 12 or 13 kg. And it is very important to understand that the best outcome of kidney transplantation throughout the years, the best outcome is seen is 2 to 10 years of age. So, whatever dilemma initially they had that why a pediatric patient should get transplantation, what will be the outcome, they will have poor outcome, what kind of life they will have. But after so many years, after so many publications, after so much of the uh, registries data, the interpretation is that the best outcome of transplantation when the kidney transplantation is done uh, between 2 to 10 years of age. They are very reasons for that. <clears throat> there is a terminology called preemptive transplant. What is preemptive transplant? So, preemptive transplant is mainly to reduce their dialysis vintage that is the time duration when child is on dialysis. So, if we, we are doing transplantation before we start dialysis and the outcome is best after various studies and data the outcome is best if done preemptive transplant however there are pros and cons also the advantages are that we can avoid dialysis which is very traumatic to the child and uh, to, to the family also financially also it is like draining 
we can avoid uh, access related issues and we all know that it has a better results than the non preemptive transplant and cost effectiveness there however there are drawbacks those kids who have not undergone to the that dialysis period where we have very uh, uh, important uh, risk of non compliance that has been seen and these are the cases where uh, they will not understand importance of their kidney transplantation another thing is that in various uh, uh, state organ donation program where before dialysis is they don't allow the uh, registration for the kid and why we are doing transplant why we are not keeping child on the dialysis so as per the 2017 us rds report the best outcome or the best life expectancy is after transplantation whatever mode of dialysis you take the best outcome is after transplantation that you can see here also with the improvement in our knowledge with improvement in the uh, medications available now we know that the graft survival and patient survival is much much better with the uh, increasing uh, knowledge that we are having also napret has also has uh, published 2014 report where they have said that the best outcome is seen when the child has 2 to 10 years of age and the best outcome is seen when child has some congenital issues or a kakut or a congenital nephrotic syndrome the outcome is best the survival of the graft survival of the patient is best in these cases also a very good study published by aims where they have also shown that our data or our indian uh, post transplant data is equal in the, to the western uh, world and the results are comparable also we have also published a data comparing the diseased donor and the live related donor kidney transplantation among pediatric patients and that we have shown that the graft and the patient survival is equal in both diseased and live related kidney transplantation so if we look at the cost of transplantation or kidney replacement therapy in india the way back dr uh, srivastava has uh, published the uh, this uh, to sensitize uh, people who are uh, willing to do this so if we look at the number it is in us dollar and the cost is very high however in gujarat we are very proud that in gujarat uh, we have government funded schemes and now that government funded schemes has been they are planning to apply across the uh, country and uh, so it will be uh, uh, financially less burden also in uh, gujarat state organ uh, transplantation program we we get pediat our pediatric patients get extra points female recipients can also get extra points also preemptive transplantation is encouraged by the soto point system and one important thing is that pediatric donor gets pediatric organs <coughs> however despite all these um, uh, availability of the uh, type of the modality for the ckd patients in pediatric age group we still fa face lots of challenges like uh, as we all know that pediatric nephrology is a neglected branch because pediatrics is full of the other important issues like under 5 mortality like vaccination like infectious diseases and um, infant mortality and all those <coughs> malnutrition so if you look at the sub speciality among pediatricians also there is very limited awareness about the uh, availability of all these modalities for uh, other healthcare uh, personnel also there is very limited awareness also in other uh, states there is very poor uh, sources of uh, dialysis facility for pediatric patients nursing staff uh, who can understand dialysis in pediatric patients so trained nurses trained technicians trained doctors are not available specifically in remote areas so if we look at the our indian uh, published data we are hardly having 100 to 150 pediatric nephrologist in number out of this <coughs> not more than 50% are doing pediatric nephrology they are doing general pediatrics and pediatric nephrology so if we look at this data <coughs> that is published by dr rajiv sinha and siddharth kumar city they did a survey uh, about pediatric kidney transplant trend in india so if we look at this there are only 10 pediatric nephrologist and 15 adult nephrologist who are doing pediatric kidney transplant and out of all these 25 doctors only three institutes are there where the government funded uh, pediatric kidney transplants are done so it is very poor for the country like us so my take home message will be prevention is always better than care 
cure and timely intervention is most important. We should be aware about the cadaver organ donation program in our uh, state and it has to be promoted at all level and transplantation has best outcome till 12 years of age. So, we should always give yes for the transplantation in pediatric patients. Thank you.